My name is Mark Hansen. Uh, my wife, Kate, and myself moved into this house about eight months ago. We have the geothermal uh, with 14 100 foot deep wells out in our backyard. We have a uh, GCT 024, which is a combo unit. It does radiant in floor, um, hot water heating, along with forced air heating and air conditioning. Uh, we're doing 100% of the domestic hot water with a high temperature unit. Uh, that was a early uh, decision in the design phase because in addition to the capability of powering it with electricity, we power it at an incredibly high efficiency level. You can't match the efficiency of a geothermal heat pump and it's quiet. You don't hear air piping through vents at 3 in the morning because air isn't piping through vents. It's heated up. The floor, the floor just radiates that heat up. Welcome. My name is Brett Little. I'm the executive director here at the uh, nonprofit, the Green Home Institute. Green Home Institute has a mission to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. And we've been headquartered right in Grand Rapids uh, since 2000. We're so excited to be bringing you behind the scenes on uh, single family homes, multi-family mixed use, new construction, gut renovations uh, on our green building tours. So I hope you'll join us as we interview uh, architects, uh, builders, homeowners, developers, energy raters, and really ask them questions as to how and why uh, they are committed to uh, green building in their projects. All of our courses are approved for continuing education in GVCI, AIA, HSW, NARI Green, Certified Green Professional, Certified Green Home Professional, BPI Non-Whole House, and they may be applicable to your state-based design or contractor license. This particular course is also approved for uh, LEED Accredited Professional in Homes. And to get your continuing ed, make sure you take the quiz uh, while you watch the video or after the video and get an 80% passing rate. And don't forget you can always watch any previous videos anytime at our website and our YouTube channel. So I'm Evan Matheson, uh, co-founder and principal of Matheson Matheson Architects. Uh, my dad is the other co-founder, Tom Matheson. Um, this project would not have been possible without him, by the way. All the painting on ladders, landscaping, uh, drywall, I mean, everything. Uh, we did a lot of the interior work ourselves and uh, it took quite a while after we moved in. So thank you all for coming today. Um, this, uh, this project was organized through West Michigan Design Week and the AIGA. Um, so who here is, was here for the AIGA tour? And who, who here came through the Green Home Institute? Because they also sponsored the event and shared it out. So Brett Little, is the director of the Green Home Institute. Uh, they were early partners on the project, um, helped out with the LEED certification, which is still in progress, um, partially because some things weren't done. Uh, this year, we hope to wrap that up. So uh, our office, Matheson Matheson Architects, uh, is a local uh, architecture firm. Uh, we started about five years ago. Uh, prior to that, I was in Boston for about 10 years. Uh, I grew up in this area, so this is my hometown. Uh, my wife and I are from here, all of our family is here. And my dad was uh, principal of uh, a large firm here in Grand Rapids and uh, left um, luckily to join me. Um, so uh, we do residential architecture, uh, we do commercial, we do institutional projects uh, all over the state and nationwide. Um, so this is an example of one of our residential projects. This is my own house. Um, this is something that uh, we started pretty quickly after I got back to Grand Rapids. Um, as you walked in, you probably noticed the kind of wooded setting. Uh, the property here with all the trees is pretty much what this looked like uh, when, we, when we approached the property for the first time. And what we really wanted to do was um, explore how sustainable principles uh, could actually drive the design process um, for the building. And you know, our, our office focuses um, on a lot of um, modern design. So this is an example of what we would call warm modernism. Um, a lot of times when people think about modernism, they think about steel and glass and kind of cold spaces. Um, for us, uh, we think this is a good example of 
um, warm. It's very contemporary and modern, but it has a lot of natural materials, um, a lot of natural light, and those things um, make it feel a little bit more friendly, I guess you could say. Um, but this project was really shaped um, by its site, by the context, and that's something for us that uh, is really important in all of our projects. Um, we really think about uh, the placement of the building on the site, um, you know, how it interacts with its environment in terms of the sunlight, uh, the air movement, those things are all drivers for the design. Uh, they're not sort of, um, they don't just happen after the fact. We actually use those as um, driving design principles. So as we walk around, um, there are really three main drivers for this design. Um, so there's the massing, so the shape of the building, the form of the building is something that um, really mattered to my wife and I and how that could actually promote and improve the way that we live. Um, and the second thing is the glass, natural light. Uh, we really had a, um, a strong focus on uh, how we get light into the house and how the shape of the building actually promotes um, natural light throughout the building. Uh, and then the third is the relationship to the ground plane. And um, we always are wanting to connect our projects in a strong way to the landscape. And this project is uh, a little bit different than a lot of houses in West Michigan. A lot of houses are, have walkout basements. Um, you have a deck off the back and then you have a lower level. Um, we really want the, the main living space to have a direct relationship to the landscape. Okay, so um, this site, this lot um, is almost exactly one acre. Uh, it's about 185 by 235. Um, it was densely wooded. Uh, we had white pine on the north side of the property and then deciduous trees on the south. So you can see um, what's left of the, the pine on this side and the deciduous trees on the other. And that actually ended up being kind of a perfect backdrop um, for what we were trying to do. Because with the building placement uh, in the center, or it's kind of hugging actually the north side of the line, um, we were able to um, clear as much um, trees as we needed to to, uh, to get uh, solar gain for some active solar panels on the on the south facing roof of the house and so the distance of the clearing of the woods is directly uh, proportional to how much sun we can gather um, throughout the course of the day okay um, the first thing you'll notice um, from this site which is something that we loved about it uh, is that it doesn't really have curb appeal there's not a street on the whole front of it. It's actually tucked back in the woods. Um, it's sort of similar to finding a piece of property that has lots and lots of acres, right? And you have a long driveway and the house can do its own thing uh, in the woods. Um, but for us, we were able to, we, we loved it because we're really close to everything. Um, we can get everywhere in a couple of minutes. Um, but because we didn't have to um, worry about the curb appeal so much, the house really became about the functionality it really became about the experience of the house. Um, you know, this house is not about kind of presentation to the public um, and, and that curb appeal I talked about, it's really about how we live um, and, and that's really what drove all of the decisions. Um, this site is a couple hundred feet from the Thornapple River. So there's two houses between us and the river. Um, and basically, the, um, the makeup of the soil is all, it's an old riverbed. So it's very gravelly, um, loose, sandy soil, which is really great for site drainage, uh, which is something that was important to us. Um, there are, there's a lot of clay in West Michigan and that can sometimes be pro problematic. So we were excited to find uh, a property that um, drained really well. And um, the site drainage is actually a, a, a big part of the lead um, process as well. So. Um, this is, is actually a, what we would call a rain garden. Um, there's a thick base of gravel at the bottom um, with plantings that like uh, wet soil, and a lot of the driveway actually runs off into this space. Uh, we always want to try to uh, reduce the amount of water we're sending out to the street. Okay. Anybody have any questions? I, I should say anybody, feel free to ask questions along the way. Um, we're going to kind of start outside, but... Um, when we go inside, the house isn't huge, so there's not really big spaces, so it's gonna be a little bit harder to talk as a collective group once we get inside. Sure. With um, West Michigan being so cloudy, 
uh, you aren't concerned about the solar aspect? No. Um, so Germany has the most solar per capita of anywhere in the world, and their um, their weather conditions and percentage of cloudy days over the course of the year is very similar to West Michigan. Um, you actually still get 80% of the energy from an overcast cloudy day. Uh, now, if it's raining or snowing, um, not so much, but um, but you still get a lot of a lot of that latent light.